Hello and welcome to another video tutorial. This one now is to do with Azure and setting up a domain name. Um, sorry, a domain in, in, in Azure. Now, it's this is a troubleshooting tutorial. Uh, so you may have seen some of my previous uh, videos talking about how to set up a, uh, a domain controller in, in, that, in, in Azure uh, and then setting up some some servers to to connect to that domain um, some of the things I've pointed out and one of the key things for uh, setting it up is when it comes to your um, your connectivity so your network connectivity now typically when you're setting things up in in physical servers you would normally go into uh, your your network connections go into the settings here and click on properties and make some adjustments here uh, to the IPs, the DNS servers, the gateways, etc. Uh, now you don't do that uh, on these Azure servers. Uh, well, you can do it, but you've got to obviously align them to the platform. So you can see here now in, in Azure, I've got my, uh, my, my server there and the networking is all handled here so the, the DNS server and whatnot is all handled within uh, within uh, the Azure platform so when you do it at this level there really isn't no need to do any kind of configuration at the operating system level so the reason for this tutorial is in case uh, for some other reason you decide that you do want to uh, or you, you do mess around there and you lose connectivity. So just to give you an example of that, um, let me just go to my um, command prompt. Um, let me just ping my other domain controller, which I believe is... Yeah, there we are, brilliant. So let's say for some reason we... Uh, let me just also just check what we've got configured here. So you'll see here now that the uh, the IP address for this particular server is 10.0.2.11. Um, so this subnet, it's got a default gateway set up here for, um, for 2.1. And then there's some DNS servers there, to, uh, 4 and 10, which are already, as I say, assigned through, through the Azure platform. Uh, if I do go into here and look at the properties for... Uh, TCP IP you'll see there's nothing set here so let's say for example um, we're, we're messing around with these configuration settings and we go okay we need to you know I want to change this and I want to refer to uh, the the DNS server for uh, for the domain controller and I make some changes here and what's probably going to happen in a moment is I'm going to lose some kind of connectivity and by doing that, I'm going to lose any kind of ability to connect onto this server through remote desktop. So it looks like it's just going through that motion at the moment. And as you can see, I've lost connectivity. So let me just close that down. And I will again try and launch the connection to to that machine and as you can see it's going to struggle because we've uh, we've changed some settings on the actual operating system of that virtual machine so in order to rectify this uh, there is a way you can do that uh, so in the Azure platform if you go to your virtual machines and locate that machine you will have here um, some various things that you can go into and the one you want to go into is serial console and by going into here this will give you some access uh, there is other ways to do it as well but uh, for today's tutorial I'm just going to simply go into the serial console so serial console allows you to run some command prompts so for example if uh, you can see there's some various commands that you can set so you can put the question mark there for some general help 
and then some uh, information about using the various channels. So if we just do a quick question mark, you'll see there's the various commands that are available at this level. So first and foremost, I'm going to uh, create a command prompt channel by simply typing in the command. And then I've got some various stuff I can actually access here by uh, using the minus question mark. And then that shows me some of the things that I can do. So one of the things I want to do now is I've, uh, I've created a channel. You can see there CMD 0001 uh, around, around here. So I can just have a look and see what channels I've created by typing in CH. And you will see here that I've got this channel name and there's the, the number for that. So to connect to that, I can have the command CH space hyphen SI space one. And that allows me to connect to the channel. So now I need to authenticate myself. So I'm going to use the login credentials for my domain name. So let's type those in. Oh, I made that bit of a hash there. So let's just go through the process again. As you can see, it's going to try and authenticate haven't been able to do so on this occasion. Uh, do I still have a channel available? Nope. So I will have to go through that process again. So the important thing here is not to have sausage fingers. So I will do it a bit more steadily now. Hopefully I've remembered the password. Okay, fantastic. So we can see I'm connected to the machine through a command prompt. So if I do, let's say, I do config forward slash all. We can see here there's the um, there's the IP address. I haven't made no changes there. Uh, I've lost the gateway there, but um, the DNS server is what I changed there to 10.2.10.0.2.10. So obviously that doesn't align with what I've got uh, back on the platform level Azure. So I need to run some commands in order to uh, to make, make the various changes. So I'm going to do that by using the, uh, the net sh. So First of all, I can use this uh, very similar to obviously IP config, but using the S, uh, netsh command. So by doing that, uh, it will show me the um, the IP address. And again, you can see statically configured DNS servers 10.0.2.10. So this is obviously where the issue is. Now, there's a number of commands you can actually run in order to, to make some changes. So for example, if you'd been updating the IP address there, um, what you can do is you can run that net sh command with the following. So you'll see here that it's saying to set the IP address. Um, we can see this is the ethernet interface I'm using and the source equals DHC. So that's going to grab it again back from, uh, from, from Azure. So if I do that, it's not going to make much changes in fairness because it's already enabled, etc. Um, however, what I'm looking to do is to get that DNS back to how I had it originally, uh, which was uh, there was a couple there, 10.0.2.4, I think was one of them. Um, so let's just let's just do that. So hopefully. I'm going to uh, update the DNS. So again, very similar in terms of the, the command net sh interface IP set DNS name to the ethernet. And again, going to grab the source again from, from Azure. But you could mark that with, you know, whatever you wanted it to be if it was something else. So 10 dot whatever, whatever. So, okay, so I've just run that. 
and we will see if it's made the changes that I needed to. So yes, fantastic. You can see there now that the um, DNS servers are configured through the DHCP again, which is fantastic. And gateway is still empty there. So you could have say, I say, run the commands. It's uh, there's a few things you can do there. Um, gateway equals whatever it is or root change but really a, a restart of this VM should do the trick and get the connectivity back so we're going to run the restart virtual machine again all of this terminal container will will, uh, will, will disconnect in the process while it's going through the through the, uh, the state of reboot. And what I'll do prior to actually logging back in is I'll still have a look in this console and just to ensure that it all looks good. Okay. I should not to go through the the net SSH. I should just simply be able to do an IP config for this all. Just to confirm those changes have been made. So yes, there we are, still the IP address there, dot eleven. Got me default gateway back after the restart. DLS servers all look good. I can exit out of that. And let's try running the remote desktop connection again. That's a good sign. Would help if you remember the password. And we're back into the virtual machine. So this is a great little tip um, if you've made lots of configuration and then as I say you've just had one of those blip moments where you've tried to update the network configuration inside of the machine and not in Azure which has lost you connectivity and that's the way to to resolve it. As you can see we're all back up and running as we originally were And that's how to resolve that. So I hope this tutorial has been useful for you. And I hope that uh, some of you are, uh, who have searched and found this, it's helped save uh, a million man hours uh, of whatever you've done to your service. And uh, I will catch you on the next video. Bye for now.